Greetings from the planet Earth to you YouTubers out there, wherever you are. Yeah. Some Christians really confuse me. The word is used a bit loosely. Um, they use the word believers, uh, many variations on it. Religions are a man-made concept. Jesus was real. Jesus said to follow me. You know, he didn't say follow some religion it was full of dogmas and the doctrines of men. He said to follow me, to do as I do. Now, I'm not anybody special. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I, I sinned. I repented big time for a lot of things. And I was terminally ill. It's over 12 years past due for the grave. And God took the time to heal me. She had a couple of things with me too, but, uh, and I notice a lot of things with the, many of the people that call themselves Christians. You know, you know, or believers, take your pick, you know. And they seem to be so stressed out and edgy and they're arguing about everything under the sun. God tapped me on the shoulder, March 12th, 2018, just the other day. And I was wearing five fields with the nitro patches a day just to live, brothers and sisters. Got a video on here, or well, two of them if you want to look at my nitro pile. And I don't need them anymore. But I am filled with this Holy Spirit. I have that inner peace, that calm. Contentment, I guess, is a good way to put it. I'm not sure there are even words good enough to describe it. You know, just that inner peace and, and, and just at one with everything. And I see these people pointing fingers here, there, yelling at each other. And God asked us to not deal with this petty stuff, to not bicker and be in division. All these groups claim to believe in the Jesus that loves me, that healed me, that took the time out for a sinner like me to forgive me, and by his love and mercy gave me more time. I had a lot of really bad stuff happen to me a while back. How many of you have ever been awake during an open heart surgery? Yeah? Hey, don't go to southern Ohio, trust me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Wow. Right. And I see people day in and day out. Some lecture and you gotta do this and you gotta do that to get into heaven and all that. Jesus is the only way to heaven. But do you know him? How many of you have read your Hebrews uh, 5 verses 11 to 14? God makes it very clear in there that the milk drinkers are unskilled in uh, righteousness. Too many have been sitting in the pews when they should have been out teaching and need to be retrained. That really pisses them off. Yes, it does. And only those that are in the need of the word can discern between good and evil, brothers and sisters. That's why it says, two in the field, one taken. Two at the mill, one taken. They didn't know what time of day it was or anything. Think of it. They're on watered-down milk and simulac. A lot of them false prophets out there and wolves in sheep clothing are more interested in the money coming in that every week drawing money from you than telling you about what the time is or calling you on your sins. They're not worried about your soul. They're worried about their pocket, many of them sadly. I know there are a couple of good ones out there, but many are not, sadly. Take a look at what I talked about the churches, the seven churches, due to the map of the seven. Two were hot, the other five were not, but they all thought they were. What is two out of seven, one third? Hot, cold, and lukewarm. The Lord has an interesting way of working with numbers. Yeah. He gives a countdown for those with eyes to see in several verses of different books of the Bible where he gives you a time on certain events of 42 months or 1,260 days or just three and a half years. At certain events, and a lot of people don't think that God is on the clock. I mean, everything is timed. He knows in advance it's happening. He's got it set because everything is part of his plan. And yet they, they, 
proclaim, oh, we know we are in these last end days of Noah. And yet, oh, go away, these earthquakes. Oh, there's signs. Do a search on earthquakes. And you see that God uses them to signify special events. Be aware of the times. Open your Bible and read for yourself. Because God said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge, brothers and sisters. If you're too busy bickering at each other and pointing at splinters in your brother's eyes, how can you seek the Lord? How can you study to sow yourself approves when so many of them, their lips are yakking, but they're saying nothing? Oh, pre-trib, mid-trib, take a look, open your Bible. Those caught up the Lord are spoken of in Revelation 7, 9 for any with eyes to see. It is the only place in the Bible that talks about those people around Jesus, yet none of you mention it. It also answers what God thinks about discrimination. Because if you can't get along with those people that are around Jesus, forget about being there. He's got a southern holding with you to be visiting. Jesus is fair. But our finest works, no matter how good they are, are, are as filthy rags before the Lord. Let's keep it real. Right? None of us were perfect. Only perfect one was Jesus. And yet I see these brothers and sisters uh, who profess to love Jesus and bickering. I've even heard some in some chats go, well, he didn't literally mean that. Some of these people are doing Bible studies. You know, Lord have mercy. You know, many are going to go there and they're going to say, Lord, didn't I do this and didn't do I do that in your name? He's going to tell you, I knew you not. Have none of these people ever wondered, you know, am I one of those? I was sitting here and the Lord kept me going. And there's no way I should have been alive, right? No way, no how. He's helped me so many times. And I was sitting there pondering and really questioning and struggling whether I had the faith of a mustard seed or not. I had laid hands in the past and those people were healed. I had seen signs and wonders and I had a few bad experiences with some wolf in some uh, church and some other Christians, the way they were treating me and all this. I just backed off and didn't want any part of it. And that was my mistake. The Lord opened my eyes again and he forgave me. Right? He took his time. He told me what he was going to do. He told me the repairs he was going to do. And he told me that they would hurt, but I would be fine if I trusted in him. And they did hurt a little bit, but I trusted in him. And here I am, filled with his inner peace and calm. I get a little bit of righteous anger here and there. I see these women murdering God's children. The baby is alive upon conception. The Bible tells us he knew your name before you were even born. Think on it. Sacrificing babies. These are the last days of Noah. All over again. Everyone is Matthew 24, 38. -ing. So many out there. Oh, yeah, you're free. Once saved, always saved. No, it's nonsense. They think they're saved. God makes it very clear in his holy living word. You must persevere to the end. How many horses you see win a race that stop halfway through the race? Uh, they sit there waiting for their first place trophy. The other horses pass them. What do you think happens to the one that just sits there? It's called a lukewarm. It's left behind. Had no oil when a groom came. It wasn't even there. Think on it. Some people think of the ten virgins. They missed one part of the equation. The cold, who didn't even show up. So where were the lukewarm going to get their oil from? The cold. Kind of wonder why they're lukewarm, huh? I can joke about a few things with people and all that. Yeah, like anybody else. I have a sense of humor in all that. But I don't like some of these parodies that I see out there that they're doing of Jesus. I don't like that. I admit it, it bothers me. You know? But I have those moments. But other than those little bits of time, the peace comes back over me. And I just, I've never felt this good in my whole life, brothers and sisters. Have a chat with Jesus. He's all about faith and a personal relationship. Not about some building or so the name of some religion, or the dogmas of men. Those things were all came after him. He preached uh, out in the wilderness, wherever he was at. 
he didn't go to a specific place. And he said to follow him and to do as he did. Lay hands on the sick. Help people. Jesus was helping people. Took the time out for people. He said that if you love God and then love each other as you love yourself, we, you know, boom, we'd have it. We'd have peace on earth. Right there. Who, nobody wants to get, you don't want to get robbed or murdered or that, so you don't do it to somebody else. And here we have peace on earth. Two simple things. God even gave us an oath clause, by the way, that all the nations uh, repented and all the people repented and God would hear their prayers and forgive them and heal the land. That's never going to happen. We know that. God has such a big heart. He proves it. He's even giving Satan parole. Think about that. After a thousand years, he's even given him another chance. Every day you're breathing out there, brothers and sisters, is another chance to get right with the Lord. I didn't know from moment to moment whether I was going to be alive. I sat back, riding out heart attacks, because I just didn't feel like going to the hospital. They kept on giving me medicine that I was allergic to. I couldn't take over 90, uh, 99.5 or 99.9% .9 of the medicine out there. Right? And there's no way I should have been around. And here I am. They wanted my left leg three times. I still got it. Praise God. Nothing is impossible for God. You see, all these people that profess, oh yeah, they love God. And the first thing they get sick, they run to a doctor. Big pharma. God made a garden for us. Everything we need to be well is in the garden. Big Pharma picks and chooses what it wants. They're into treatments, not cures. God made the plants for our use to cure all our needs and to feed us. Plain and simple. Put your trust and faith in the Lord and you can't go wrong. If God is first in your life and everything else falls after that, you don't have to worry. Invite Jesus into your heart and start that real personal relationship. It's from the heart is where all prayers and praise should come from. Talk to him every day like he asks in Psalms 113. I talk to him all day long. And I am filled with his inner peace and calm and his presence every day. That's why it bothers me so much. I see so many out there squabbling who profess to love him squabbling and, and, and calling each other false teachers everybody these are the days of noah the last days of noah these things are to be expected the third temple is going up soon and we have 42 months god is on the clock again he warns us he gives us time to repent and get right with them and get on the meat of the word so you are not deceived thousands are following a fake jesus in russia right now and how many of them done it in the States and how many are right now in the States and other parts of the world? And these people can't do anything. The Antichrist will be able to call down fire and do wonders. And he will fool them all. And then you've got this Antichrist Pope who's going to say, Oh, he's God, he's God, he's God. He's going to go along with it. And they will be deceived because they didn't know the need of the word. That's why two were in the field and one taken. Two in the mill, one taken. Because they just waved the Bibles that they carried, quoted a few verses and thought that was good enough. Some guy standing there on a Sunday would get him into heaven. Well, guess what? What day did Jesus worship on? Saturday, the Sabbath. And it's good enough for Jesus. Well, guess what? It's the Sabbath. And that's the day that they see as the Sabbath. Satan was always the opposite. So God wanted the end of the week. That's why Satan took the beginning. And where did there be worship? The beginning of the week. Think on it. A moment of time. Think on things as a child would think on them when you think on them in the Bible. Reflect on them for a moment. How would a child see this? What is plain and simple understanding of this? As clear as can be, so many of them are so clear. And be, people try to inject different meanings for it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And you need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. Any child could understand that. Yet people seem to be having a problem with it. 
turn on the news and you'll see with all the violence and killing. Much of it in the name of religion. But God is not about religion. It's about a personal relationship and faith. Okay. I can say this because I'm alive by his grace and mercy. Okay. I shouldn't even be alive. He gave me stuff that I was allergic to and he kept me alive. So I was poisoned and I lived. I was on a sheer cliff one time. So I was kind of like an Elijah there. And the storm came out of nowhere. And I persevered and I made it to the top. Right? Okay. Yeah, I was scared. I had some really interesting experience. I had an elk stand over me one time. Woke up to the smell. To the butt end of the elk over my head. Okay. Looked down. And this is the biggest one I'd ever seen. I was in the middle of nowhere. And I thought it might have been, <laughs> back then, I thought it might have been one of them prehistoric, uh, you know, elk. Because I had animals walk by me earlier. And they looked like they'd never seen a human being before. So I figured, hey, this thing didn't know what I was. You know? But it took the time to shuffle its feet so that it made sure it didn't step on me when it left. And it was in those moments when I was out in the wilderness that I had those take your breath away moments that God was sharing with me, even though I didn't even realize or think about it. And God was calling me, and I didn't even realize it. Every day, God reaches out to people in so many small little ways, you don't even realize it. That momentary delay at one spot that, you know, upsets you. Well, if he weren't delayed, you would might have been at another spot a moment earlier, and an accident could have happened. God has done that so many times for people, and yet they don't realize it. Every day is a blessing, brothers and sisters. Every day, it gives you a chance to get right with the Lord. Stop arguing with your neighbor. God tells you, you're supposed to forgive. And how many times? At least 490 times. Right? But how many people forgive more than once, if they even forgive once? So many of you are out there holding on to old grudges and hates. And resent. How can you expect to enter the kingdom of heaven with all those negative vibes in you? Okay? You got to release. You got to forgive. How can you expect to be forgiven if you're not willing to forgive? Think on it. God talks about these things in the Bible. Don't let some hireling who only cares about the money coming in on the tray tell you at the time of day. Jesus rebuked a lot of them Pharisees and called them. Uh, Heretics and you name it, rebuked it for not even knowing the time of day. Right? There is the Son of Man standing there before them. They're saying they know the word and the letter of the Bible and know well their their Torah, the law, and they know all there is to know about God. And there's Jesus standing there right in front of them, and they knew him not. And their wicked hearts wanted to kill him and stone him. That was all their petty minds could think of. Do you really want to trust your eternity to some hireling? Especially when so many of them have been on the news of late and they're telling you to turn around doing this and doing that. And it, it, it's horrific, brothers and sisters, some of the things they do. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Right? The only one that you can count on is Jesus. Okay? In the end, he's the one that's going to be there for you. He's the best lawyer in the universe, and you definitely want him standing beside you in God's courthouse. You know, when the white throne judgment comes. Give Jesus a call today, and he will be there with you tomorrow, and it matters most. Many fear the things to come, but why? If you're right with the Lord, you'll feel that peace and calm in your spirit. As the living waters flow through you. And then you'll realize. What's the worst that they can do? Send you to your Lord. That's where you want to be in the first place. So no matter what you win. That's why the Lord said fear not. Your redemption draws nigh. The rocks are on the way. The fools will hide in their fancy holes in the ground. Like it tells you in the bottom of Revelation 6. 
They even call some of them deep underground military bases. Dumbs. <laughs> Think about it for a moment. Oh, yeah, truth in action. God has a plan. That's unfolding before your very eyes. Get right with the Lord, because he's the landlord of all. And he owns all the real estate. And eviction day is coming for many real soon. Think about it and give Jesus a call today. Bye-bye.